How concerned they should be is extremely, uh, like on a scale of one to 10, 12. Social justice, white privilege, anti-racism. Are you hearing these buzzwords all the time in America today? What do they all have in common? Do they all trace back to something similar? What if I told you they do? And it's called critical theory, better known as wokeism. I'm Taylor Trandall with PragerU, and joining us today is one of the world's foremost experts on critical theory or the wokeism movement. He's also one of the world's foremost critics of it, and his name is James Lindsay. James, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. I saw the other day that Richard Dawkins gave you a shout out on, on yeah. Twitter and like endorsed your book, um, Cynical Theories, which people should check out. Um, but then like, you know, a, a few weeks ago, you were on Ali Stuckey, a conservative Christian, uh, her podcast. So what there's this strange confluence of, you know, conservative Christians and, you know, like legendary atheist, you know, new atheist um, intellectuals are finding what, what's that common ground that they're finding today that you seem to be in the center of? reality. It's the pursuit of objective truth. And so I know a lot of people who are watching or listening who are atheists are going to say, ah, you just said objective truth in Christianity. But the thing is, is, whether you believe the Christian framework or not, the Christians believe they are pursuing objective truth. They believe there is an objective truth worth pursuing, that everything's not subjective. Mm -hmm. And they ground that in scripture and they try to get to that through exegesis, which is a rigorous methodology. Um, People who are like Richard Dawkins, who come from the rationalist scientific perspective, believe there's an objective truth in nature. And of course, many Christians, of course, see nature as a reflection of God's creation. So they see objective truth in nature as well. And so there's actually more agreement there than people realize because they've been so busy fighting about whether or not religion is true. Uh, there's, a, there's a deeper level question is, is something true at all mm -hmm. rather than is everything subjective and up for grabs? And mm -hmm. that's what people are catching on to. So I want to get into, we have many questions from our audience, um, various sectors of our audience, students, young professionals, parents. So this first question is from a Prager Force student, and he says, I want to speak up against my woke friends, but I'm afraid of being called a racist. At what point is being silent worse than being canceled? So that's a... That's a tough question. It's an easy one for you. Yeah. It's, yeah. At yeah. what point do you have to make a personal decision <laughs> based on your integrity? It's really difficult. So um, the truth is it is ultimately an individual circumstance. You have to read your own circumstance. You have to decide for yourself, you know, when are the costs going to be greater? But what you have to understand is that unless people start speaking up and unless people start taking that risk, it's only going to get worse and therefore it's only going to get harder. So what I would tell people to understand is that the way that the trajectory of this movement is going so far, there may be some people who can lay low and get through it and just keep their head down and they, they win, I guess. But the truth is, the longer you wait to speak up, the harder it is. The, yeah. As hard as it is now, it will only become harder to, to resist later. Um, so I advise people like that to, to do what they feel like they can. There are other ways than just speaking up and speaking back. There are other ways. Uh, if, if you listen to uh, Alexander Solzhenitsyn uh, in the Gulag Archipelago, he, he says, you know, let the lie come into the world. Let it triumph even, but not through me. Hmm. So find ways to live in your own integrity and make the, you have to make those decisions for yourself. I can't tell somebody, yeah, now's the time to just blow up your career or lose all your friends. Right. That's great. That's really good advice. Okay, so we've got another question from a Prager Four student here. She says, I think many of my woke friends and family started down the path with good intentions, just wanting to be against racism and for equality. But it seems like all of a sudden they're talking about dismantling capitalism, they're justifying violence um, as long as it's on their side, and ignoring any facts that contradict their narrative. Why does this seem to brainwash people so quickly? And is it even possible to wake up someone who's woke? <sighs> That's a hard another simple one for you. No, that one's for really us. hard. In fact, <laughs> that one's really hard. I honestly, so woke is like a. You, I hate to say it this way, given the circumstances, but woke is like a spectrum. Um, but you could think of it like with 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 a religion, like with Christianity. You've got like probably the pastor's really into it, the theologians are really, really into it. And then you have kind of people who go to church and they really, they try to be serious and they're varying degrees of serious. Then you have that, you know, yeah, I'm a Christian, but they probably haven't been to church in like three months. You have the same things happening in woke. So yeah. when you say, can you wake up a woke person? The question is, how far in are they? Are they like all out? If they're already defending violence, you're probably going to have a hard time. Mm -hmm. If they're talking about dismantling capitalism, 
and they're serious about it, you're probably going to have a hard time. If, however, they're kind of, you know, well, I put the black square on my Instagram or whatever, you can probably walk them back still. You can probably mm. show them, you know, this is actually a lot scarier or this is a lot um, grosser. Neo-racist is a word that we've been using. It's not racist in the usual sense. It's this neo-racist and new racism that it's being reinstalled. And that's kind of gross, really. And you can kind of get that little bit of a gag reflex. You can get them to laugh a little bit and say, yeah, that is kind of silly, you know. Mm -hmm. If you can show them places where the theory is self-contradictory or where, where the activities look like they're self-serving or whatever. So you can, if they're not too far in, wake them up. But if they've gone all the way in, this thing's like a cult. And you mm -hmm. can't just wake a cult member up. And that's why it brainwashes people so quickly and effectively is because it preys upon people's, A, desire to be a good person, and B, vulnerabilities that they might not be. Mm -hmm. And it's tapped so effectively into their social strata, right? Mm -hmm. So somebody else was just asking, you know, well, I'll, get, well, I'll get canceled by all my friends. Well, it's so much easier to just start mouthing it and going along with it and right. then that social pressure just makes it so much stronger. So it's difficult, but try to try to tell the truth, try to be uh, sensitive and try to be open because eventually the bubble will burst. And there, the, the thing that's most important here is that when somebody comes out of the cult, whether it's woke or whether it's any other cult, you have to be willing and ready to welcome them and affirm them and say, you know what, it's not a big deal, let it go we're all cool now. You mm -hmm. know, you've got to, you got to be there, give them an exit ramp and then kind of love bomb them to be honest yeah. with you. Like don't take this combative posture or, you know, beat them down. I mean, they, yeah. Like, don't be like, look what you did. Can you see how terrible you were, you know, you were mm -hmm. crazy, but that's not going to help. Invite them in. You know, glad you're here. Yeah, exactly. Glad well, you're here. Welcome to the club of reality. Yeah. You're back in. Welcome back. Moving to, this is a question from uh, a young professional audience. He says, my work has just scheduled a training seminar about diversity, equity, and inclusion. Does this mean that they're teaching critical race theory? And should I refuse to participate, or at what point should I draw the line? All right, so this is tricky. Uh, again, I can't get you fired. But, okay, are they teaching critical race theory? It is... I can't say for sure that they are. It is possible to teach these things without it. And there are a handful of programs that teach it, teach diversity or whatever, do diversity training without it. Um, there are a growing number of them. I know that because some of them are asking me how to help design them. So I know people are trying to create alternative diversity training. So it's not guaranteed. That said, the overwhelming majority of these trainings are based in critical race theory to where I would say that it's a virtual certainty that if somebody's taking it up at your workplace, unless it explicitly says we're not using critical race theory on purpose, it probably does. Hmm. Um, should you participate? I don't know. It's up to you and your situation. If you've got like a kid at home and you've got to keep the paycheck, you've got to check in with yourself, right? Um, same advice I gave earlier applies though. The longer you wait, the harder it gets. Mm -hmm. The longer you wait, the harder to live with yourself it's going to get. Uh, I have heard a lot of success though, because a lot of people in the business world and even in the po political world aren't that aware of it. This is usually being pushed by a fairly small number of activists. So if you get a little bit informed about this and then you go talk to your boss, and I've published some resources on my website, New Discourses, about what you can actually say. And you go talk to your boss or you go talk to whoever is in charge. A lot of times you can make more headway than you think and you can come up with their either an alternative or to get them to start looking to build and find that alternative that doesn't use critical race theory. And that's, I think, a, a superior thing than quitting. Um, taking a stand at work is probably yeah. going to get you nuked out of your job. So if you do so, do so strategically. Um, I don't mean to tread on toes, but the Christian world, I try to listen very well. You mentioned Ali uh, Stucky a moment ago. I try to listen, and one of the things they talk about a lot is the gifts of the Spirit. And you can't, like, don't deny that, right? So you being able to function within that that space is also a thing. But at the same time, you got to remember Solzhenitsyn. Let the lie come into the world. Let it triumph even, but not through me. So you have to find that line for yourself. And then throughout, you know, thousands of, we've seen uh, parents are talking all the time about how thousands of, of school districts across the country are adopting yeah. Black Lives Matter at school curriculum and, and things of that nature. So but the question is basically how concerned should parents be about woke indoctrination and critical race theory in schools and what can they do to fight against it? Um, how concerned they should be is extremely, uh, like on a scale of 1 to 10, 12. Hmm. Um, this isn't playtime anymore in the schools. Uh, I say that with no reservation, the level of alarm you should have about what's happening to your children in the schools right now is 12 out of 10 alarm. Um, this is, it's a nightmare. 
It is an absolute nightmare. It's in most, if not all schools. People think, oh, well, I can pull them out and put them in, a, in private school. It's in most, if not all, private schools. Even big religious private schools are taking it up. There's not any like kind of safe harbor. Um, and it's a real emergency because you're going to be spending all of your time basically learning about this and trying to deprogram your kids instead of genuinely bonding with them or spending time with them you know, and if you want to try to yeah. prevent it, or you're going to have to try to homeschool, but they will probably try to outlaw that to to get around that or to force particular curriculum. You really think that's coming? Would, I almost guarantee wow. you that it's coming. Um, so it's a it it's the attempt is coming. I don't know if it'll succeed. Uh, so it's a dire situation. What can you do? Um, same kind of advice as talking to your boss. Talk to the school administrators. Start finding out. I have a, a guy I know in, in a school system in a, in a big city. I don't, I don't want to give too much information. Who got looking into it. And he found out that his school district, which serves, you know, thousands and thousands of families and, and their kids, it w- was being hustled by 12 people. 12. You found all the names of the activists pushing this. The entire school system is being pushed around by 12 activists. Mm-hmm. So imagine if 120, 10 times that many parents band together and say no. No, here are the people right. doing this. Some of these I've heard in, in, in a city. I spoke to the mayor that was getting hustled, a small city somewhere in, in USA town. <laughs> and uh, they looked into it and there were about 20 activists hustling the city. And it turned out that only one of them was a constituent. These are activists who are acting you know, largely through the internet. And it's usually a very small number of them. So what you have to do is you have to become that counterforce. Mm-hmm. You have to organize, get informed, and start showing up. Sh- go, go to the school board meeting, even if all you can do is throw sand in the gears by asking questions that they don't want asked or pointing out things they don't want to have to have aired. Get on the school board if you can. Um, call the not just, it's tough to bother the teachers. Principals though, and especially school superintendents, get get them to explain what's going on in the school. Why is this critical race theory? If it's not, explain how it's not. Here are these terms I'm concerned about. You will have to do some work, but getting involved and getting in their face and making them work. If they're going to indoctrinate your kids, make them work for it. Don't yeah. give it to them for free. Yeah. Yeah. And the cost of doing nothing is exponentially worse than, you know, the time it takes to get organized and, right. and try to organize resistance. The other piece of advice is Find a lawyer, and in fact, if mm. you can, find one who's ready, for, who's hungry for litigation. Because, <laughs> and it, I say that like, oh, we're going to bury him. No, it's not that. A good litigator does a lot of what's called discovery, and that's basically like they have like almost subpoena powers. They can they can really do a lot of deep digging research and unearth a lot of corruption. A lot of times, you know, this is being paid for somehow. Yeah. They can unearth how it's being paid for. They can find out what organizations are being involved. Um, also agitate your local and especially state governments. State governments control a lot of what's going on in education. Write your state legislatures. I was just, in fact, today I testified in the uh, legislature of the state of New Hampshire. I got invited to talk. And so, and that was about critical race theory in schools and state institutions. And so bother your state representatives until they bring the issue to the floor. It's something everybody can do. This is, this is great practical advice for parents. Um, all right, so we want to end with a sort of rapid fire. Lightning round. Lightning round, true, false. True or false? Um, all white people have internalized racism and white supremacy. False. It's a- a- absolutely preposterous to say that all white people have a particular disposition of mind. Um, if you want to understand the theory, what it says is that the system benefits white people, so therefore white people have comfort in the system, therefore they have no motivation to overturn it, and that therefore makes them complicit. They call it white complicity. Brown people are complicit too. They call that brown complicity uh, in white supremacy. And it's a preposterous thing to accuse people of, especially the majority of whom aren't just uh, not racist, but they are against racism in the way that the word anti-racist used to mean. Statement number two, true or false? America is fundamentally a racist country. False. America is not a fundamentally racist country. America is, in fact, a fundamentally anti-racist country in the old sense of the word. It starts from the Declaration of Independence saying all men are created equal. It is true that at the time when that was written, for various reasons, uh, that was not being lived up to. And we put forth a lot of work through history to, to get to that point. But you look at the 
the, the, the former slave Frederick Douglass, where he speaks in 1852 or three on 4th of July very famously. And what does he appeal to? The Declaration of Independence and the Constitution and says that we have to live up to those things. America is fundamentally anti-racist, right? And then what does Martin Luther King say? Martin Luther King says that there is a promissory note written in those, those founding documents that has not been paid yet. What's he appealing to? The fundamentally anti-racist nature of the United States. It is absolutely a distortion. It is a willful and evil distortion to say that the United States is intrinsically racist because it had to struggle its way out of racism that existed when it was founded. I love it. Yeah, there's, there's no reason to deny the incremental progress. That's that's literally what sort of liberalism and enlightenment values the, and Judeo-Christian values is, allow for that. But that's right. this, this neo-Marxist woke worldview doesn't allow for that incremental progress. It's we need to blow up the entire system because it's fundamentally through and through racist. Yeah, they, they say that explicitly. The, the very first paragraph of the book Critical Race Theory and Introduction says that explicitly. They say, unlike traditional approaches to civil rights, which value step-by-step and incremental progress, we have this other thing that completely repudiates the liberal order. They, they say it explicitly. No, not even hiding it. Not first paragraph, not even <laughs> yeah. trying to hide it. <laughs> yeah, don't bury the lead, as they say. Yeah. All right, last question we have in our rapid fire true and false session. This one is true or false, the end goal of wokeism is a Marxist revolution in America. This is Jeopardy theme song time. That is more true than false, but it's complicated. With a little bit of it, it's complicated. The, the truth is that the, the ideology of critical race theory, et cetera, critical theory behind that does come out of the attempt to figure out how to make a communist revolution take place. Whether it's going to be strictly Marxist is not likely to be the case. They call it liberationism. It has a new utopian endpoint that's not the proletariat owning the means of production. Its new endpoint is called equity. Uh, we're going to have a perfectly equitable heard society. heard of that word before. Yeah. And so it's not strictly Marxist, but it has the same shape. I mean, if we were going to be word dorks, we'd call it Marxoid. Indeed, it certainly seems like that. All right. Well, um, thank you so much for joining us. How can people uh, support what you're doing and find more of your work and, and find you on social media? Um, if you want to find me off of social media, you can find me at my, my website, New Discourses. It has social media accounts. They're all at New Discourses. Um, I, it's all crowdfunded. So if you choose to support me there, I love you for it. Thank you very much. Uh, I almost am completely crowdfunded. So um, I try to put out special content for everybody who subscribes. So come be a subscriber. Come listen to my special sub- subscribers only podcast called James Lindsay Only Subs. And catch me there. All right, well, James, this has honestly been super helpful for me and I'm sure a lot of people watching. For you guys watching at home, make sure you like this video, share it with someone who needs to hear it, comment your thoughts down below, and subscribe to PragerU for more. We'll see you next time.